Hey, what's up everyone? So today we're gonna to be going over the number one question you need to ask to skyrocket your business. I'm super excited. I have a very special guest. Like this girl has been featured on some insane uh, shows. Like she was featured on Alan, Rachel Ray, the Today Show. And she was even the cover on the cover on the Entrepreneur Magazine. And she's generated millions of customers without even spending any money in ads. So I want to introduce you guys to Katie Richardson. What's going on, Katie? Hey, hey. How's it going? Doing amazing, Jonathan. Super excited to be here. I'm really excited to share some wisdom from my experience with the audience today. Absolutely. Now, if you guys are on this training, real quick, if you guys could do me a favor and comment where you're watching from, comment hashtag live, because we're going to be going over some amazing things in today's training. I'm really, really excited. I'm I'm like literally, I'm, I've been waiting for this training. We've had this like for, I think, a few months I've been yeah. waiting for this. I know I posted in the group last week. We have a ton of students that were already super excited about it. So what are you going to go over in, in today's training? Well, in today's training, I'm going to share a principle that has really helped me navigate, in particular, difficult forks in the road. Sometimes we get at this place, at this vantage point where it's like not really clear what direction we need to go. And I have kind of discovered a way to navigate these difficult questions and decision making in a way that ultimately helps you get what you want. And I think that's really important. I, a lot of times we can kind of live our life according to what we think we should do and what we're supposed to do. And what I'm going to share with you today, not only will help you navigate those difficult questions, but ultimately it helps you create the, the business and the life that you want. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, I mean, I, so I work with people that are looking to leave their nine to five job. Maybe they don't have a business yet. And, you know, they're, they're looking for that time and financial freedom. Uh, will you be kind of hitting on that or how exactly will you be oh, helping people? Yeah, absolutely. If you don't even have your business yet and all you have is a desire to have your own business, maybe you are working a nine to five. Like this mm -hmm. is the thing that's going to help you start to um, move towards what you really want. So it doesn't matter if you're currently an entrepreneur or you just have a desire to be an entrepreneur and you desire that freedom and that independence. This is, I, I, I operate from a place of understanding core principles. And mm -hmm. if we can really understand core principles and stand firmly in that place, then what we need to do kind of becomes clear once we're in that understanding of the core principles. So what I'm going to share today is based on that it's core principles and from there, the path forward starts to become so much more clear. Yeah, that's amazing. I'm super excited for this. It looks like people are already coming in. They're commenting. So we have awesome. Nadia here from South Africa. We have hey, uh, we, we have Michelle here from Virginia. Uh, Manish, hey, hi, Jonathan. Hi. Uh, yeah, so people are coming in. We have a lot of people Love on. We have, um, we're ready to start. So if you want to go ahead and just take over, Katie, and do your thing. I'm excited about this. I'm going to be taking notes. So let's do it. Awesome. Thanks, Jonathan. So in order to really get the most out of this training that I'm about to share with you, I'm going to invite you to be really present with me. And that means turn off the notifications on your phone, shut down any not other notifications or extra browsers, and just be right here right now. Be super, super present with me. And then the second invitation is to be really curious. I'm going to share some things that might seem different than what you've heard from other business coaches or experts. And that's because what I'm about to share is, is kind of this little known truth. And it's something that I feel very fortunate to have discovered on my own entrepreneurial journey, on my own uh, process of making critical decisions to ultimately create the life that I wanted, that I wasn't living at the time. And so be curious, be open to what I'm, sa I'm saying and take notes both on what you're hearing me say and what you're hearing in your mind as I teach you these things. And what I'm about to share with you has the potential to radically transform your life. I say that out of experience, both for me personally, and as I've shared this on stages, as I've shared this on podcasts, like I've seen the people who are open and really take what I'm saying and put it into action. They see just exciting, amazing transformation on the other side of that. So know that this has the potential to do that for you and your life. And for you to understand me, I, I want you to know that I'm not your, your typical type A entrepreneur. I'm not. In fact, the article that was written about me in Entrepreneur Magazine is called The Accidental Entrepreneur. And so even if you don't see yourself as the like hyper driven, um, like 
person who's who's here to dominate and yet you still have that desire to kind of take the um, less less taken path um, that's who I was and you have a chance to create the life that you want and you dream of even though maybe you're working for somebody else right now and that's okay that's awesome so to give you a little bit of context on this story I had built up a significant business and again it was kind of by accident and um, but had had done it in a way that allowed me to be a present mother with my kids at the time I had three kids maybe I even had four at this point um, I have four today and had built this international business alongside my husband and it was honestly continually following my curi curiosity and wondering what's possible for me like what is my potential and if I got out of my own way and I took whatever courage or bravery that I had to take the actions that are really terrifying me right now, what's potentially on the other side of that? And that's really what drove me to do the things that I did that ultimately built this significant business. So I, I go from, um, you know, kind of believing I was a nobody and a stay at home mom who didn't really know her place in the world to all of a sudden having 2000 stores in the U S distributing my brand and distribution in 26 different countries. It was kind of mind blowing and it happened in a, in a quick period of time. And so I'm in this place of <laughs> previously I had believed when you build a significant business that all of a sudden so many of those worries and fears and doubts go away. And actually the opposite had happened as I built a multi-million dollar business so did the level of concern and risk also became magnified and great. And I felt tremendous responsibility for my distributors. I felt tremendous responsibility for my manufacturers, for my team members and their families. And all of a sudden I actually had more weight on my shoulders and it became more and more difficult to make important decisions because as my business grew, so did the number of people who were being impacted by my decisions. And I was feeling this general anxiety and worry and concern of, I, I just, I knew something needed to change. The way I had been doing business, here's the thing about business, is there's no autopilot. And the way I had been doing business was no longer creating the results that I was used to and that I wanted. And I started to get nervous and realized that something needed to change. But what? I could go this way or this way or this way or this way. And maybe you've experienced this too. Like you have the opportunity to continue to climb the corporate ladder and to further your skill set inside of your job. Or you could start to really focus on something else over here that maybe provides more of the time freedom and financial freedom that you've always dreamed and desired. And maybe you even see multiple paths for how to do that. And so you feel stuck at this fork in the road that doesn't just have two options. Maybe like me, it feels like it has 17 options. And that's how I felt. And in a lot of ways, I felt like I was pushed up against the cliff and I needed to make a decision. And I could go here, 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 maybe here, maybe here. And I was overwhelmed with all of these decisions. And as a person of faith, I was like, oh, God will tell me what to do because he has greater perspective than I do. So let me go ask him. So I would pray. I would read my scriptures. I'm actually even a temple attending woman. I would go to the temple and I would ask him in this sacred um, uh, moment, I would ask him, you know, what should I do? What am I supposed to do? Like, I'm your daughter. I love you. I'm constantly seeking to become the woman that you created me to be. So what is it? I got a lot of options in front of me. You just tell me I'm a jumper. You know, I'll jump. And over and over again, I wasn't really getting an answer. The only answer I was getting was really vague and it was keep going, Katie. I'm like, what kind of answer is that? <laughs> Seriously, what kind of answer? Keep going. Do you see all of these options? Like which one is the right one? Which one am I supposed to go down? What direction do I go down? And my husband was watching me in this turmoil. And one night we were getting ready for bed. He's sitting on the edge of the bed, you know, taking his shoes off or just debriefing from the day. And I'm telling him how I can't make a decision. And I'm terrified. I feel like I need to evolve the business, but in what direction and how? And he says to me, well, Katie, you're a designer. So why don't you just go into the future and start to imagine and see what it is that you want your life to look like and how can the business support you in that and create 
the solution. And I was like, oh, that's true. Like I'm a creator. I know how to make something out of nothing. I know how to take an idea and a concept that only lives in my head and then walk it through a process so that it actually is in reality. And he's reminding me, not only can I do that for a physical product, right? Like Apple AirPods, right? You can do that for something physical, but I can also do that for my life and my reality. And I had actually done it multiple times throughout this entrepreneurial journey. Oh, okay, cool. So I get out my journal, get out my journal and my pen, and I write out future Katie. Ooh, this is fun. Future Katie is a speaker. Oh, wow. I'm not her now. Future Katie is an author. Future Katie is a powerful businesswoman. Future Katie is a light to the world. Future Katie is a woman of God. And I write all of these things down and, you know, it kind of feels silly and funny and embarrassing, but I also know it's part of the process. So I'm about to go to bed. I close it up and I start to tuck it under the bed. And my husband says, wait, do you want to share it? And I was like, not really. <laughs> That's really embarrassing stuff. He's like, come on, share it. I'm like, okay. Made me super uncomfortable, even though we'd been married like 15 years at the time. I hand it to him and he's reading it. And he looks at me and he says, Katie, if you want these things, then you can't have them just living in the future. You need to cross out future Katie and you need to start to own it and claim it and write, I am. And I'm like, but I'm not those things. And I'm a woman of integrity. I'm a woman of honesty. I'm not going to write down a bunch of lies on a piece of paper. Are you kidding me? And he's like, well, if, if you always say that it's going to be in the future, then it will. It'll never be in your reality. So you need to declare it in, in the now. And I'm like, okay, fine. Hand it back to me. So he hands it back to me. And I start to go to cross out future Katie. And like my hand is shaking. I can't do it because it feels like the biggest lie. And the other wild thing is my brain is screaming at me that you're a liar. Who do you think you are? You're nobody. You think that you can go be a speaker? You think you can be an author? Why would anybody put you on stage? Why would anybody pick up your book? My brain is screaming at me and it's scary. I feel like I'm betraying my honesty. I feel like I'm betraying my integrity. But at the same time, I'm like, there is some something to what my husband just said. So as, as best I can, I cross out the future Katie and I write, I am. And when I get to the end, the last one I wrote is, I am Katie Richardson, get out of my way. I get to the end and it scares me so much that I close my journal and I slip it under my bed. And I'm like, I never want to look at that or see that ever again. A few days later, I'm in the city of Portland on the hillside with my husband. We're about to go to a lunch meeting with um, a potential business partner. And there's nobody, we're, we're there early, which when you have four kids, that's a really big deal to be there early. In fact, the restaurant isn't even open yet. And we're on the hillside of Portland, which is a beautiful city. And on the hillside, it's overlooking this city that's along a river. And normally it rains in Portland. In that moment, the rain had stopped. The clouds were starting to part and the sun was just beaming down into the valley. And my husband turns to me as we're just sitting in the car waiting. He says, hey, do you have your journal? I was like, yeah, I always have my journal. He said, cool. Why don't you go stand over there, right there on the edge? Why don't you go stand over there and declare to the universe who you are? I was like, what in the world? Who are you? Why are you always pushing me? <laughs> and he's like, I mean, you don't have to, but I just think it would really help you. And even though everything inside of me was like, heck no, I don't want to do that. I also knew that there was some truth to what he was saying. And even though it was so uncomfortable, even though it felt strange, I was like, okay, fine, I'll go do that. So I go stand on the edge of this cliff. And as I stand there looking at the sun beaming through the clouds and open my journal to that page, I go to open my mouth and nothing comes out. And tears start to stream down my face. I'm like, this is a lie. This isn't true. This is a big fat lie that I made up one night in bed as I was writing in my journal I can't say this out loud. I can't declare this to the universe. Like my brain is attacking me again. 
And through the tiniest, faintest whisper, I say the words. I am a speaker. I am an author. I'm a powerful businesswoman. I'm a woman of God. I'm Katie Richardson. Get out of my way. Like I can barely whisper it. And my husband from a distance comes over and he's like, that was pretty good. Say it again, but louder. And I'm like, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> and I, I like say it again a little bit louder. I say it a little, little bit louder. And, you know, I finally shout it. And then I close my journal and I think that was weird. That was strange. That was uncomfortable. I never want to do that again. And we head into the lunch meeting. And as I'm in the meeting, I'm reflecting in my mind over the last two years, as I've been trying to make this critical decision, as I've been trying to seek wisdom from my father and to understand from a greater perspective, what it is I need to do and I'm supposed to do. And I start to see something really amazing. You see that over the last two years, before this moment, I'd been traveling a lot for my business. I'd been seeking the right business partner to invest in my company. I had been going to trade shows. I'd been in negotiations with incredible companies like Target and Nordstrom. And every time I traveled, people kept asking me the same question. And it almost started to become irritating. I'm like, why is everybody asking me this question? What do, what do they mean? And one time in particular, it stuck out so uh, dominantly that it really had me take notice. I was in Las Vegas at this, the CEO, no, <laughs> CES, Consumer Electronics Show. I do, I have an amazing husband. And I'm telling you all the amazing things about him. There are times that we totally disagree and I can tell you that too, um, but we help each other grow. And so I'm at the Consumer Electronics Show. It's the biggest, busiest trade show in the world. And I had just taken a lunch break and I'm coming back into the convention hall. I'm actually inside of a booth for my husband and one of his companies. And as I'm coming back into the convention hall, I see this throng of people moving their way through the aisle. And there's like all this excitement and people are trying to push their way towards a central figure in this circle of about 30 people. And I'm like, who's that guy in the middle? It looks like Stevie Wonder. I mean, I've never met Stevie Wonder, but that's who it looked like. And I'm pushing, I'm not pushing my way. I'm just walking back into the convention hall, watching this excitement, not too far from where I am. And just walking back towards my booth. And as I'm watching this excitement and commotion and wondering, is that Stevie Wonder? I see this figure, this man who's standing next to the Stevie Wonder type figure, who's popping his head up above the crowd. He's literally jumping to get above the head so that he can see further and beyond this crowd that's right in front of him. And very quickly, I can tell he's looking at me. And again, like this is super crowded. There's so many people around and he's looking at me. And I'm like, okay. And pretty soon he starts to, like Moses parting the Red Sea. He starts to push everybody in front of him aside. He runs up to me, puts his hands square on my shoulders. And he says, you're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Who are you? And there it was. The question that all of these strangers in Ubers, on airplanes, at convention halls, over and over and over again, people were asking me, who are you? And in that moment, I was like, what just happened? I, I, I kind of wanted to throw my hands up to God and be like, what am I supposed to do? All these people keep coming and asking me the same question. What am I supposed to give them? What am I supposed to say to them? Like, this is not helpful. And for two years, I was getting this question. Sometimes I would get it five times in a day, and it happened every time I traveled. It was really wild and bizarre. And in that moment, it was so dramatic that it really had me take ownership for what was happening. And it was people kept asking me this question, who are you? And as I sat there that day in the Portland restaurant, trying to have a conversation with this potential business partner and, and just reflecting on what had just happened, I started to see it. All those years that I was seeking wisdom and I was seeking the answers 
in seeking the answers, I made the mistake of focusing on the wrong thing. Tony Robbins says, it's not that we don't have the right answers. It's that we're asking the wrong questions. And while I was asking God, what am I supposed to do? What should I do? What do you want me to do? As I was asking that question, I was asking the wrong question. I was looking for the answers. And what he was handing me, even though I didn't see it until that moment, what he was handing me was the question that I needed to be asking, which is, who are you? Who are you, Katie Richardson? Who did I, what gifts and talents did I give you? And given that I gave you those gifts and talents, what are you going to do with your life? Like, what do you choose to do with those things? And as terrifying as it was in that moment over the next few days and weeks and months to start making some decisions, I did. I started making decisions. I stopped waiting for God to tell me what to do. And I started to take ownership for deciding who do I want to be in this world. And it's this beautiful co-creation process of really asking that question, you know, what has God given me? And given that, what can I choose to do with those skills and those abilities that I have and the desires that I have? And, and start answering that question, who am I? Or, or who do I want to be, right? Going into the future, like I'd done in my journal, even though I didn't really realize at the time what it was that I was doing. Going into the future and from that future point, looking back and saying, who do I want to be? Who do I want to be? Maybe I've been the default up until this point in my life. But now that I see that I have influence over my life, that I have influence and agency to choose who I want to be in my life, can I now go into the future, but then look back from that future point and say, who do I want to be? And then make the decision in the now to be her now. And several weeks after this moment of declaration in Portland and, and kind of honestly being a little bit confused afterwards, feeling like, what was that for? What was the purpose of all of that? Because I still doubted myself. Like I still had a lot of doubt and confusion in my mind. A few weeks later, I get this phone call from somebody I don't know. And she says that very thing to me. She says, hi, Katie, my name's Nicole. You don't know me. We've never met. I heard about you through a friend of a friend. I want to know if you'll come speak to my group. And I was like, well, tell me more about your group. And she come to find out she's a high powered attorney who has created this organization of specifically women who have been extremely successful in their careers, whether that's high powered attorneys, high powered CPAs, fund managers. We're talking very influential, super, super smart women. And we come together in this group of like experienced women and like up and coming women and we mentor each other. And in the process, it's a, it's a fundraiser and I want really powerful women on the stage to speak to us. And I want to know if you'll come speak to us. And what's my mind saying? Oh, <laughs> she thinks I'm powerful. <laughs> well, I should tell her all the things she doesn't know about me. Cause obviously she doesn't know the real Katie. And I'm I, in my mind, I'm thinking that as she's talking, and then something comes to mind. And it was remembering that day I made a decision that I am a speaker, that I'm a powerful businesswoman. And in that moment, I could walk down the path I'd always walked down, which was diminishing myself, not believing in myself, or I could move towards this decision and declaration that I had made and say to her, okay, yeah, I'll come speak to your people. And, and even though I felt so much doubt, so much fear, so much unknown, like, what the heck am I going to talk to these people about? I have nothing to contribute to this audience. I said, yes, terrified in all of the unknown, right? It, it is with as much courage I could muster. I said, yes. And I got off the phone thinking, what the heck did I just do? And not only did I say yes, I said, yes. And I need you to pay for my flight. And I need you to, to pay for my hotel. And like, I'd never done that. I'd never done that. And yet I did it. And she said, yes. I was like, okay, cool. So I go down to the event, we have lunch the night before, and I'm dying in my head. I'm doing my best to be present, but I'm dying in my head because I'm terrified of that stage. And the night before I took out my journal and I, I read those declarations aloud to myself in the mirror. I am Katie Richardson. I'm a speaker, I'm an author. I am a powerful businesswoman. I'm a light to this world. I said them over and over again. And when I got up, up the next morning, I said them to myself again in the mirror. And as I got on stage and I saw this $13 billion fund manager who was the moderator, who was asking me expert questions, 
as she would ask me those questions, my brain would be like, well, I don't know the answer to that. What do you think, Jennifer? Like, that's what I wanted to say. And yet I would remember who I am, who I choose to be. And so before answering those questions, I would remember I'm a powerful businesswoman. I'm a light to this world. And I would answer from that place. I don't know what the right answer is, what the answer should be, but I can tell you my perspective. I can tell you how I see things. I can tell you how I set up my life so that I can balance being a present mother of four. So I can still continue to grow and develop my relationship with God. So I can show you how my marriage grows and develops over the 15, 20 plus years that I've been married. I can tell you that. And, and so I shared answers and pretty quickly that fear that was so dominant in the beginning, it began to start to diminish and being on that stage and answering questions, it almost became fun and exciting. And so within, you know, five, 10 minutes of being on stage, I was just Katie Richardson on stage, having fun, answering questions. There happened to be 150 high powered individuals in front of me, but guess what? I was the one on stage. I was the one who had the mic and I was answering the questions. And when the event was over, it was a panel that was me and two other very successful business women. We go to sit down at our table and have lunch because everyone else has been eating. I'm starving. I go to sit down and this woman practically attacks me. She was, and, and she was in tears. And she said, I just, I needed to come talk to you because I've never met somebody as powerful as you who's been so successful in business, who also reads their scriptures. And I was like, how does she know I read my scriptures? I guess I did kind of mention that in my daily routine. She's just crying. Like that was the main thing she took away from everything that I shared. I was like, oh, wow, thanks. Like, tell me more about you. And, and we're talking and she goes to leave and I go to sit down and, and behind her was this like sea of people who wanted to talk to me. And over and over again, these women were saying really incredible things to me. What were they saying to me? They were saying back to me the very things that I had declared three weeks ago on that hillside in Portland. Chokes me up. And they were saying things like, you're such a powerful businesswoman. You're a light. God is using you. I've never met somebody so amazing as you. And I'm like, what is going on? And I'm just kind of trying to watch it all and do my best to take it in. My tendency was to push it out, but I'm trying to actually let it in. And I'm watching all this happen just in awe and in amazement because I didn't know that I was kind of following what I now see as like a, a um, principle-based and proven path. But I'm like trying to take it all in. And I, I, the room finally empties and it's just me and the woman who organized the whole thing. She's kind of taking down um, decorations and things. And I sit down, I'm just exhausted at this point. I have not eaten at all. I've been talking for hours and hours and hours and I'm just really tired and worn out and also just trying to take it all in. So I'm sitting there and all of a sudden, Nicole, who's the woman who organized it, she's standing on the stage, taking stuff down. And she turns to me and she's kind of leaning over me. She says, almost in like this angry voice, Katie, what was that? She points to the stage. And I said, um, what do you mean, Nicole? She said that there were four women on that stage and you were glowing. I couldn't take my eyes off of you. What was that? And I, again, I'm like, just in shock, in awe. Holy cow, what is happening? <laughs> and I, out of like, just kind of confusion and amazement, I just said to her, Nicole, I feel really strongly about some things. And I'm so grateful you gave me a chance and a stage to speak and share that with people. So what was Nicole seeing and experiencing? What was all of those women who came up to me afterwards? What were they experiencing? They were experiencing a person who had the courage to ask this question, who am I? And, and to take it a little bit further and say, who do I want to be? And, and made a decision and a declaration to herself, to the world, to God, to the universe on who I wanted to be. And even though it was scary, even though it was intimidating, I had this beautiful experience that's, that showed me just how profound it is when we take the time to pause and ask this question, who are you? And that's where you can hop in, Jonathan, because um, I want to hear from you. Like, what it. are you hearing? What are you seeing? What are you experiencing? Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Like I, the other day, um, you're, you're kind of hitting me now. So like, it was crazy. So I, I've been able to, you know, build my business up, all that stuff. I, I've broken false beliefs in the past. Um, like getting on camera, stuff like that. But for some reason, like 
don't know, I, I still have this thing where like, for example, okay, my church came in, they're like, Hey, you know, you should get on our, our live show and you should do, um, you know, get on, get on in, uh, and it's basically like a live stream and you should be the host. And I don't know why I was just like, no, <laughs> like, I, I just felt like I had, I just couldn't do it, you know? And I don't know why, even though I had been on camera so many times, you know, from YouTube and stuff like that for me, it was like, I don't know. It was, but I'm just thinking about that as I'm doing, it. I'm like, why am I so scared to do that? Right. And I, yeah. that's just the whole, the whole time you've been talking, I've just been thinking like, like that whole scenario. And I, I don't know what it is or if I am not asking the right questions on who I am, or I'm not confident in who I am, even though I've yeah. done all this other stuff, like it, it, that's kind of where I'm at right now. And it's just really powerful that you said that. Yeah. And what's interesting is like, we can sometimes show up really confident in certain in certain areas of our mm -hmm. life yeah. and not and not realize that maybe we're diminishing ourself, our worth, our value, our um, contribution in other areas. And so if this was a coaching call, like we would dive into it and I would we would start mm -hmm. to uncover and identify what are the stories or beliefs that you currently have around yourself when it comes to your faith and even speaking on faith topics that have you feel uh, like you have nothing to contribute in that arena. Yeah. And it's, it's one of those things that's like, cause my wife was like, she's the one that was like, she told someone that I should do it. Cause I do YouTube and you know, a big following, whatever. And, and uh, it's crazy that I'm telling you this cause I really wouldn't tell this to anybody, but yeah. um, you had me open up. So anyways, uh, but yeah, so she was like, she's like, yeah, why, why aren't you doing it? I'm like, I don't know. Like I, I don't know. I just don't know if I would be good, you know, like I can't tell him, but she's like, you are, you're on camera all the time. And then I don't know. It, it's one of those things that, um, that even though I'm, you know, on this, you know, I've been able to get a certain amount of results in a certain area and build a certain following. Why is it that when I'm asked to do something that is totally different, but it's, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just like, yeah, I don't know. Can what I it help is. you see something? Can I help you see sure. something? Yeah. Cause this, this like kind of brings it all together. Everything that I shared today, um, as human beings, we're constantly looking to be seen, to be heard, to be valued, to be loved. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we can sometimes in our naivete, we can seek those things externally. We can look to others to validate ourselves that we are valued, that we are seen, that we are heard. And mm -hmm. as we do that, we become needy and desperate of people and business and life and experiences to prove that, prove our worth. And ultimately, you know, those things can't give that to you. And so if you seek value and, and, and knowing your worth externally, life will always disappoint you. Mm -hmm. And the opportunity is to see your worth and your value yourself, independent of your contribution, your business success, even your family and life success, can you see that you have worth and value independent of all of those things first and foremost? Mm -hmm. And if we could give that to ourselves first, Jonathan, mm -hmm. then in a way that that um, kind of lizard brain, naive, immature brain that says, like, I need to find that from people can actually kind of calm down and settle down. And, and it goes back to what I was saying, like, who am I? If you can make yeah. that decision on who you are rather than seeking it from other people, if you can make mm. the decision on that first, that piece of you is protected and safe. And you then can kind of step outside of your comfort zone and go do things that are uncomfortable and do feel scary mm -hmm. because that, that need to feel valued is already being seen by yourself and it doesn't need that attention from others. So as we, as we make that decision and the declaration independent of anything else, we then are safe to step outside of ourselves and do things that are really uncomfortable. And, and, and to like further this a little bit more, yeah. as you make that decision on who you are, you can take your eyeballs off of you, which is what we do when we're afraid. We're looking mm -hmm. at ourselves. Yeah. Fear comes as we look at ourselves. So if we make a decision on who we are, we don't need to look at ourselves anymore. And our eyeballs can be really focused on them, right? the audience, the customer, the other person in the, in your faith audience who is also mm -hmm. afraid and, and has a lot of questions, maybe like you have experienced in your life and you can really focus on them. And as you, as you focus on somebody else, so much of that fear dissipates. Yeah, that's interesting. And, um, you know, it's, it's funny cause I, 
I've gotten over certain fears in, in my journey. Right. So like when I first started, there was no way I was getting on camera, like at all, you know? Sure. And uh, like, this was like back when I started and I yeah. see that in my students, like they, uh, they have that same fear. Like I have a lot of students, sure. like, no, I don't want to get on camera. I'm scared to get on, you know, start talking, whatever it is. Um, so my wife brought that up to me. She's like, well, why are you telling your students not to be scared on camera when so good. You're, it's just so weird. Like, I'm like, yeah, but, Cause that, I mean, that's totally true. Like I am looking at like myself and okay, I'll tell you this. Okay. <laughs> um, so me and my wife, uh, or my wife and I got on a, it was a, it was a news channel or it was, uh, it was on the news for talk about our business. This was back in 2018. I had never been on camera. We were just kind of, it was another business that we had nothing to do with the online stuff. Okay. And we were on the news and I like totally froze up. I'd never been on camera to that point. So I think I go back to that and um, mm. I'm thinking like, okay, I'm going to do that same thing. That could be another reason why as well. So just want to mention that. Totally. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's how our brain works. Like when something is traumatic and you might not have categorized it that way, but it was a strong enough of an experience that your brain remembers it. And it, yeah. it kind of defaults back to that experience of, being on the news and not knowing what to say and feeling like you're at a loss of words. Right. And, and mm -hmm. not wanting that to happen again. And again, that's looking at yourself and that's sure. where the fear yeah. shows up. Mm -hmm. So the more that you can, and, and I learned this trick when I was at trade shows and I was talking to CEOs of major companies like Carter's, yeah. Mm. Like I would be talking to a guy and then it would come out that he was the CEO of Carter's and then all of a sudden this fear and I was oh, tripping wow. over my words and all like all of a sudden I changed and I could see myself doing this mm. and I was like, what happened? Where'd you go, Katie? <laughs> and, <laughs> and so if, and it was because I was then now that I knew he was the CEO of Carter's, then I was like, do I sound smart enough to him? Mm. Like how, how is he viewing me? Do I just look like an idiot? And am, am I speaking on his level? Is my product interesting to him? Like all of a sudden I was worried about myself. And so when we mm. can take our eyeballs off of ourselves, and I, I consciously had to shift my thoughts to, okay, he's the CEO of Carter's and he has needs. He has customers that have needs. What are his customers needs? How can I take the value that I've created in my business and, and add value to him and his world? And as we focus on somebody else, that's where the fear can start to really dissipate. Wow. That's amazing. And, and this has, this has tremendous application for somebody who has been wanting to move away from their day job and been mm -hmm. wanting to step into some form of a business where they have the independence and freedom and the revenue, um, the profits that they want. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's asking this question, like it can be hard to ask that question. Who am I? Cause look, a lot of times the first thing that pops up is, I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so we can, you can ask questions like, who do you want to be? And, you know, do like what I did, look into the future and start to ask, like, if I'm still at this job at 12 months from now, 18 months from now, three years from now, like, is that okay with me? Mm -hmm. And if you can move yourself into the future enough to look back and say, oh, wow, yeah, that's not okay with me. I don't want to continue to do these things. And I, I want to build a life where I have the independence and freedom to spend more time with my family. Maybe, I don't know, I moved to Puerto Rico. Like that's one of the things that I created a desire for. Yeah. And so can you look into the future far enough to say, what do I wish I had done three years ago, but from a future point, right? Mm -hmm. Which is as you move three years into the future and then you look back, guess what? That's the now. And that's mm -hmm. where your power is. So if you go three years into the future and say, what do I... If, if I'm three years in the future, what am I going to wish that I had done at that point? And then in the now, make a decision on what you want to do. And then ask that question, who must I be in order to do and accomplish those things? And make the decision to be him, be her. Now, it's not the same as fake it till you make it. This is very different. It is yeah, a decision. Right. It is a choice. I made a decision to be a speaker first. Mm -hmm. And then life God, the universe, whatever you want, whatever you believe moved to support me in that decision that I had already made. Mm -hmm. There's tremendous power in choosing. And so making a decision that I am a speaker and 
and, and staying in that place and, and life supported me and reached out to me and said, Hey, you want to come be on my stage? And as terrifying as it was, again, yeah. I looked into the future and I was like, yeah, I want to be that woman in three years. So I need to choose to be her now and start taking actions as her now, not as a fake it again, but as a choice, and even though it's so uncomfortable and it might feel strange and awkward choosing to do it anyways. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's huge. Like I, um, I think a lot of people will get comfortable in like where they're at. Um, Like even me, like I said, I I get comfortable in what I'm doing, but then when I have to go and step out and get out of my comfort zone, that's where like, okay, I need to figure out the right questions to ask. So thank you so much. That's been, that's been super helpful already. Yeah. 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 You're welcome. And my invitation to the audience would be, don't just listen to what I've said and say, good for Katie. That was great for Katie because I share my story, not because I need you to see me, but because my story is your story. And while parts of our reality might look very different, the the underlying theme is very universal. And you have an opportunity to look into your future and ask that question, who do I want to be? And how can I make a decision in the now to start being that individual, to change, even though maybe my whole life I've been this way, right? Right which for me was believing I was invisible, diminishing myself, shutting my mouth, being quiet, uh, not speaking up, right? That had been me for a lot of my life. And looking at that and saying, hmm, is that gonna get me what I want? Does that help me in my marriage? Does that help me in my business? Does it help me as a mother? No. Do I wanna continue to be that way? No, okay. (laughs) And making a decision to make changes. And, and starting from this place of I am, it's a decision, it's a declaration, which then has life moved to support you in that decision. That's so crazy. That, that's so powerful too. Like I, I had never thought of it like that. I, when I first stepped out, I want to say I did make a decision, like maybe not to the extent that what you did, but like, I remember I was like, okay, I, there's no way I'm going to be stuck at this job anymore. Like this is back when I started and I was like, okay, whatever. I'm getting on camera. I don't care what happens, but that was at that time. So like you continue to do that even now, like to get out of yeah. your comfort zone, because like, yeah. like, is there, uh, is there times now where you like get stuck now and you have to like kind of oh, yeah. go back to it? Okay. Yeah. There's a saying that says there's no growth in the comfort zone right. and there's no comfort in the growth zone. Mm. And I very much want growth in my life. It's a human need to experience momentum and progress and growth. And I've made a decision that that's what I want for myself. And so I'll notice my, when I get too comfortable and I'm like, okay, something needs to change time to get out of this comfort zone. And I will actively make changes to push myself out of that comfort zone. And, and I seek discomfort for that reason, because I value growth and I want that in my life. Wow. Thanks, Katie. That's awesome. Well, yeah. um, I don't know uh, if if we, we want to do some sort of Q&A or if there's questions. I don't know how much time you actually have. but uh, I've got like five more minutes. I know we went over originally, but I do have five more minutes if, if anybody wants to ask any sorts of questions that they have. Okay. Yeah. If anyone has some quick questions, drop them down below. Um, real quick, Katie, is there anywhere, uh, where can, where can my audience follow you? Or I know oh, you yeah. said you have a workshop coming up. I do. Uh, yeah. Can you tell us about that? First, follow me on Instagram. I'm katie.live. I drop tons of value there. I'm constantly trying to teach and serve people from Instagram, and that's how I primarily utilize it. And I feel strongly that you can build a business in a way that it doesn't have to destroy your health or your family relationships or even your faith. And that's what I sought to do was how can I build a business that as the business grows, so does my relationships and my faith and my health. And so those are kind of the principles that I use in Instagram as I share and teach from there. So go follow me there. And, and then coming up in September, end of September, I've got a workshop that I'm going to be teaching people how you can have this pro CEO mindset, Hmm. which is absolutely critical. Like you can go attend workshops, take courses or programs that are going to teach you everything that you need to be successful in building your business. But if you don't have the right mindset without fail, you will get in your own way. And I've watched it for myself and I've watched it for other really incredible people. And so I show you how to get out of your own way. And I have really simple formulas and processes for how to do that. 
And um, so in September, I'm going to show you this pro CEO formula. It's, there's four steps. And I don't even have a place for you to sign up for it right now. So if you want access to this workshop, send me a DM in Instagram or even drop a comment here. And I'll have my assistant come and grab your name and your email address. And we'll make sure that you're the first to know about this workshop. Yeah. And if, that, if you guys actually can drop workshop down below, that way we can go back and there you you know, go. make sure you guys have access to that. So either it's totally free. It's totally free. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Free workshop. Yeah. That's that's amazing. So do you, do you have a date or you're not, you're not sure yet? It's like the last week of September. I think it's September 28th. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Well drop a, drop a workshop down below and then so the best place to reach out to you is Facebook Messenger and then to follow you on Instagram, correct? Yeah. And here I have a podcast. It's called What's Working Now. And that's oh, another nice. place that you can go and to listen to me and really participate and learn some of the principles that I teach my CEOs. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. We, there's some people dropping that down below. So perfect. All right, Katie. Um, well, thank you so much for being on. I really appreciate your time and the value that you've given, not only to me, but to my audience. This has actually helped me a ton already. So awesome. uh, I appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. This has been amazing. All right. Have a, have a blessed day and we'll talk soon. Awesome. Thanks, Jonathan. Bye.